Hi, welcome to the video lecture on Hopfield Networks. If you look at the introduction, Hopfield Networks were proposed by John Hopfield in 1982. This is a network with an associative memory. The key advantage of a Hopfield network is it can be used for different pattern recognition problems. This Hopfield network is fully connected and it is also a single layer auto associative network. So when I say it is single layer each neuron is connected to every other neuron. So obviously each and every neuron will act as both an input and an output. So the basic purpose of a Hopfield network is to store one or more patterns. Then at a later stage if you want to recall the patterns based on the partial input it would obviously be easier. So that is the basic necessity of using a Hopfield network. So now we have seen what is a Hopfield network. Now let us explain this with a very simple example. Let us consider a pattern. I am probably going to scan this input text and then display the corresponding ASCII value. So how does a Hopfield network work here? If you look at the pattern, the original pattern is nothing but the alphabet T. The image that you see on the right side is basically, you know, not very clear because of some kind of a noise. So the image is corrupted. So how does the Hopfield network work here? So what we basically do here is, you know, we will map it out so that each pixel corresponds to one node in the network. Then I do a training. So training is basically assigning weights to recognize each of the 26 characters in the alphabet A to Z. So you need to probably train for both uppercase and lowercase. So that comes to about 52 patterns. Now if your scan gives a pattern, you know, that looks like something on the right hand side which is obviously corrupted. Then you input it to the Hopfield network and probably after a few iterations, you know, the Hopfield network will be able to reproduce the original pattern that you see on the left side which is nothing but a perfect T in the alphabet list. So if you look at this architecture of how a Hopfield network will look like. So since it is a single layer you know both inputs and outputs are there and they are all fully interconnected. So each node in the input is basically connected to every other node in the network. So basically this Hopfield network consists of a set of neurons and a corresponding set of unit delays and you know forming a multiple loop feedback system. That is what is depicted in the picture here. So the number of feedback loops will be obviously equal to the number of neurons. So what is the output? You know the output of this neuron is going to be a feedback via a unit delay element to every other neuron in the network. So there is no self feedback in the network which you should remember when you design a Hopfield network. Another key property about the Hopfield network is the weights are symmetrical in nature. So what are the key properties of a Hopfield network? A Hopfield network is a recurrent network all nodes are connected to all other nodes. The nodes have binary outputs, so it's either 0, 1 or minus 1, 1. So based on your convenience, you can fix it. It's obviously true or false. The weights are all going to be symmetric in nature. No self-connections are permitted. The nodes are all updated asynchronously. 
meaning you know obviously the nodes are going to be selected at random and when we see the concept of a hop wheel network in detail in the further presentation video you will understand that and the network has no hidden nodes or layers these are certain key properties of a hop wheel network so the first we look at the training algorithm so during the training of the discrete hop wheel network the weights will be updated so we might have binary input vectors or a bipolar input vector so hence in both of these cases the weights updates need to be done with the following relation so when you look at a binary input pattern then you compute the weight matrix like this wij equals sigma p equals 1 to p 2 into si of p minus 1 2 into sj of p minus 1 and assuming i is not equal to j the second case is very much obvious if it is bipolar input what do i do so we basically compute like wij equals sigma p equals 1 to p si of p into sj of p again the same condition it will be satisfied i is not equal to j so this is case 1 and case 2 for a binary input or a bipolar input pattern binary input is 0 1 a binary bipolar input could obviously be minus 1 and 1 so when you go into the testing algorithm we have some sequence of steps so basically this hop field network follows what is called the Hebbian rule or the Hebbian learning principle so the initialization of the weights need to follow the Hebbian rule then you probably iterate a sequence of steps where you know you take an input vector x then you make an initial activation function of the network equal to the external input vector that is what is written as y of i equals x of i the value of i ranges from 1 to n then you have for each input sorry each unit y i you need to run a sequence of steps where you probably calculate the net input using the formula y i n i equals x i plus sigma i y j w j i then you go for applying the activation function using certain rules so the rules are like this y i equals 1 if y i n i is greater than 0 0 if it is less than theta and y i if you know y i n i equal to theta what is theta theta is going to be the threshold the next step is important here in the case of a hop field network i will broadcast this output to all other units and you test the network the testing algorithm and the training algorithm are discussed now now we will see how a hop field network works using a numerical example for better understanding so i highly recommend you by using this video as the base please have a pen and a paper and following this video please work out physically using a pen and a paper by yourself so that you have a very clear understanding of how a hop field network will work I will give you an overview of the numerical example and it's going to be very very easy and you know it's just some kind of matrix operations and substitution and formulae and so on so I highly recommend you follow this video and work it out by yourself using a pen and a paper and it's definitely going to be useful now we go into the numerical example consider a five node hop field network assume the pattern is 0 1 1 0 1 so it is nothing but binary pattern so since there are five nodes I'm going to make a 5 cross 5 matrix with the weights the weights from a node back to itself are all represented as zeros so that's why the diagonal is 0 so this matrix is a symmetric matrix so I write w 1 2 1 3 1 4 1 5 similarly for all 
then I go for computing the weight matrix very simple v is a vector 0 1 1 0 1 right so v1 is 0 v2 is 1 v3 is 1 v4 is 0 and v5 is 1 now you go for computation of the weights when I say for instance w12 how do you do w12 equals 2 into v1 minus 1 into 2 into v2 minus 1 just substitute you will get minus 1 similarly do for all the things now you get the full weight matrix put it what do you see this is just for a single pattern 0 1 1 0 1 yeah so how did I arrive at this matrix I arrived at this matrix after computing for each of these and then just substituting them here yeah nothing great very very simple operation then what I do let us consider the case where we want our phi node half field net to store both patterns let us say 0 1 1 0 1 and I have another pattern 1 0 1 0 1 so obviously you need to go for calculating the weights on a weight by weight basis so how do you calculate w12 w12 could be calculated as follows you know sigma comes into play now 1 to n so 2 into v1 minus 1 2 into v2 minus 1 whatever then accordingly if you keep on substituting you arrive at minus 2 so similarly you go for all the weights the weight matrix for the pattern 10101 is found here now what do we simply do I am going to add this to the previous weight matrix simple addition matrix addition everybody knows right in school days right now we will verify the generated weight for each one let us do for the first one 0 1 1 0 1 okay so what I simply do is simply a matrix multiplication row into column wise very very simple it's called the dot product so after the dot product I get minus 3 2 2 minus 3 2 so after you apply the activation function given earlier based on the threshold you get the correct pattern simple now consider the second pattern 1 0 1 0 1 again apply the dot product you get 2 minus 3 2 minus 3 2 apply the activation function so if it is greater than 0 you put it as 1 if it is less than 0 put it as 0 and so on then you get the correct pattern again now what will happen if you consider the combined weights that is where the problem comes one information is wrong can you see yeah so here now we go for updating the nodes in the half field network so if everything is fine obviously there is no issue else what you need to do you need to update the node in a half field network so what basically happens here is you know if you look at the pattern 0 1 1 0 1 and the pattern 2 1 0 1 0 1 both of these basically differ by two bits I would say the first and second bit basically toggles right so what I basically do is you know I will start with pattern all once so if I apply in the formula and you probably arrive at some output you know the value of V3 does not change it's worth noticing that since the weight from node 3 to itself is 0 we could have just calculated the dot product of the third column so V3 I n is equal to 0 how can you update a neuron if the value of its inputs are changing that is another obvious question there are two basic approaches normally followed the first approach is called synchronous updating what I do here you know all the nodes get updated at the same time based on the existing state so to update the nodes in this method just multiply the weight matrix by the vector simple see this is not realistic in a neural sense you know 
because it might be a simple operation but as neurons don't all update at the same rate because they will all have varying propagation delays varying firing timings etc so this approach called the synchronous updating is not recommended so i probably choose the second approach what does the second approach talk of the second approach very clearly says update them in a random order and this is the approach basically adopted and described by the hopfield network see normally uh, when people do it at real time using a hopfield network they will update it in a semi random order you know uh, they update all of the nodes in one step but within that step you know they are all updated in random order you know like you know 3 2 1 5 4 etc and so on so that is how it goes real time that is perfect so another obvious question when can i stop updating the network and the answer is simple if you go through all the nodes none of them changes then that is called the stopping criteria stop then if you are updating them in a fixed sequence you know there is a fixed sequence and you know you keep updating in that particular sequence 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 etc what will happen then if you go through five consecutive neurons without any change in values then you can say you can stop simple you can follow any one method both are fine absolutely so let us say Uh, you know for simplicity purposes i choose the method where i update the nodes in a fixed order 315243 etc it can change based on your convenience so update node 3 no change okay go to 1 what does it do changes is there go to 5 no change go to 2 no change go to 4 there is a change what is the pattern 01101 one. similarly you continue the example again you go 3 1 5 2 4 same order yeah so absolutely no change what is the meaning when there is no change i told you when you follow a fixed pattern like 3 1 5 2 4 or 1 2 3 4 5 or whatever when there is no change in 3 1 5 2 4 5 then i can say you can stop that is the stopping criteria for the hopfield network so when you stop it what is the attractor 0 1 1 0 1 done yeah so this gives you an understanding of what is a hopfield network how does training happen in a hopfield network and then how does a hopfield network work and i have also explained you with a numerical example of how a hopfield network works for better understanding of how a hopfield network works as i mentioned earlier please work out by yourselves by following this video and definitely you will get a better understanding of the working of the hopfield network So stay tuned for more video lectures on neural networks if you like the video I would request you to subscribe to my channel so that you can keep yourself updated on the latest videos on neural networks thank you